Okay, so today has a massive, massive update for Luminar Neo. It's a mind-blowing update. They finally added masking. Now this update clocks in at 4.5 gigs, which is pretty impressive considering this company is based out of Ukraine. So thoughts and prayers to you guys. Really impressed with what you're doing, even though what's going on over there. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Let's dive into the release notes. All right, so this update's huge. It's got the powerful neural network behind Mask AI detects up to nine separate elements in a photo. People, skies, architecture, transportation, water, flora, mountains, natural ground, and artificial ground. I've tested some of this stuff out. We're gonna go through some photos and show you guys what all this does, but I'll leave these release notes up here on the screen so you can screenshot it, read it later, but those are the main things that I wanted to talk about because the masking in this, ah, oh, I've been waiting for this for so long. There's some really cool things that we can do, so let's dive into some of the photos and see what we can do. So one of the biggest things that I've been waiting for for portraits for a very long time is having complete manual control and masking over the color tool. Now you can do this in, in Lightroom where you can select the subject and you have some color and you can change the hue. But I want to, for this image, I want to get rid of some of the yellow hue that's around him from the yellow background. So first thing, we're gonna go over to our color tool. We're gonna select masking. We're gonna go down here to AI mask. It's gonna load and it comes up with this little cool animation that I, I really, I dig it. I'm here for it, I'm here for it. Okay, so under our AI mask, we have human sky, flora, mountains, architectural, natural ground, and man-made ground. We're gonna go over all these later, but the first thing obviously is we're gonna start with human. And what it does is it's going to automatically detect the human in this image. So here we go. So I don't know about you, but I never have the patience to sit here and mask out the individual. Like it's just, it's way too much work, but luckily it does it for me automatically. So now we can go back over to our adjustments. We can remove color cast if I want. Now that changes it to green because the opposite of yellow is green. So we don't want to do that too much, probably like right there. Now we can go down here to saturation and only affect the yellow on our subject. I've been waiting for this feature for so long. So I'm gonna take some of the yellow out so that way it doesn't have the yellow around his skin and whatnot. Now it did mess up the mask a little bit over here by his ear. What we can do is we can go over here to brush and erase and just kind of clean that up just a little bit right here, zoom out. So here we go. So it's a very subtle adjustment bringing down the yellow, but a bunch of subtle adjustments eventually turns into something big, which is really nice. Now we can also take this mask a step farther. So if I go back over to masking and I go to AI mask and I have human, I can actually invert this if I want to. So I can go to adjustments and since I had it inverted, I'll bring up the yellow. So now let's say I want to bring up the vibrancy of only the background. So I've inverted the mask so I can just slide that vibrancy up if I want it to be really, really yellow and really pop, or if I want to bring it down and give it more of a faded look. So there's many different things that we can do with that. And just here's the before and the after, just uh, so good. Okay, so for our next photo, we have a surfer here. Now there is a mask for water. I think what I wanna do is I wanna give this water uh, a little bit more of a dramatic feel to it. So I'm gonna go over to the dramatic tool here. We're gonna hit masking, we're gonna hit AI mask. It's gonna do its little AI animation thing. Okay, so we have human sky architecture, blah, 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 all that. So I'm gonna do water. Now it does a pretty good job of selecting only this water, which is fine, it missed this part, but luckily all we need to do is go to brush, paint, and I can just paint a mask in right here to get all of the water. So that way when I do the dramatic effect, it only affects the water. And I'm just doing a very rudimentary masking here. I'd be a little bit more precise, but there we go. So now when I go back to my adjustments and I hit the amount up, see it's only affecting the water and now the water looks super, super dramatic. Little drama for your mama. So here's the before, here's the after. Again, only affecting the water. Mind blown. Okay, the next image we have here are some snowy mountains in Yosemite. This is actually where the Grinch lives. No, he doesn't live there. 
I checked. Uh, okay, so you can actually add multiple masks with the same tool. So I think for this one, I think I wanna give the mountains kind of a nice little glow. So we're gonna go to glow, we're gonna go to masking, we're gonna go to AI mask, it's gonna do its little masking magic. I'm gonna do mountains, which it gets pretty much the entire mountains. It did miss a little bit of the trees, but luckily we can do flora and then it gets the rest of it. Perfect, done, easy, fantastic. So I'm just gonna bring up the glow just a little bit. And you can go down here to the advanced settings. Maybe I don't want it as bright and maybe I don't want as much contrast. But again, now I can just affect the parts of the mountains. And here's our before and here's our after. So mountains just kind of have a nice little glow effect to them. Just wow, mind blown what we can do with technology nowadays. Okay, so for our next image, we have Griffith Observatory here. Now this is an architectural based photo. So I have my AI mask, I'm gonna do architecture and look at that, it pretty much selects the entire Griffith Observatory. It does miss a little bit down here, but that would be easy enough for me to paint in and an adjustment like details is small enough where you're not gonna really notice that. But if I wanna really, really sharpen up that observatory, it does that for me. Here's the before, here's the after. Just kind of makes it like really punchy, really, really sharp. It's super easy, super quick. All right, so our last image here is an image that I took in Pennsylvania. Now, I think this is an appropriate effect for this one. We're gonna go back to the mystical effect. Now, I'm gonna do man-made ground. That's right, it can detect man-made freaking ground. So we're gonna hit that, and it gets most of it. It gets here, but it also gets some stuff over here, which is fine, it's not really that much. I'm just gonna go to brush, I'm gonna go to erase, and I'm just gonna erase this part right here. So that way we only have the trail selected. There we go. So now I'm gonna go back to our adjustments and I'm just gonna bring the mystical up and notice how it's only affecting the part of the trail. So it really gives it that dreamy look. Just, I'm blown away by this. This is absolutely gonna be my main photo editor from now on. So with all these features finally added to Luminar Neo, I'm really, really happy with this program. It's the main photo editor that I'm gonna use from now on. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button so freaking hard, you hurt your finger. And I'll see you in the next one.